Welcome to the Reinbold Report. Today, I will talk about the Reinbold response to the letter that the governor just sent out that was completely unexpected. First of all, I want to say Governor Reinbold is ready to rumble. Although I know I'm entering into a battle ring that is unequally matched, you have the governor title. I have senator title. You have roughly a $10 billion budget plus about $6 billion you've been able to redistribute of COVID funding. I don't really have a budget. All I can do is stamp approval basically on a budget or do budget cuts. In regards to staff, you have over 20,000 staffers that you can end up working with or through. Tremendous resources at your disposal. I've got two staffers. In regards to the media, you have been able to get before the media for the last 10 months. I've basically had Facebook. So I understand that you're six foot 10 and I'm roughly five foot three. I understand that this is an unequal match. However, Governor, I want to let you know, Reinbold is ready to rumble. In regards to the letter, I have reviewed the transcripts from my committee, most of them. I can find no firm foundation for any of the accusations. I have ever reviewed the Facebook posts that you claim that I said that you declared martial law and that you claim that I said that you said that you required mandatory vaccinations. I have never said that. I do believe that there is no firm foundation on any of your accusations. I will be giving a more technical response soon, but today I just want to let you know that I'm very disappointed in your letter. In regards to the fact that I've asked you personally for meetings, I've emailed you, I've called your office, and the bottom line is you won't come to my office to have a discussion. And not only that, I have gone to the extremes when I emailed you to fill out an event form and invited you personally to an event in my office. Because when I send Alaska governor an email, it says invite me to an event, basically. So that's what I did. I invited you to event. I got declined. I've invited many people before the Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee oversees the activities of the court and Department of Law. The Department of Law has approved all the disaster declarations, the disaster declaration extensions, all of the mandates, the 18 mandates that you put forth, in addition to the health orders, and they have also put their stamp of approval on what the alleged legal attorneys say is illegal, your Department of Law put the stamp of approval on extending disaster declarations. Because the Judiciary Committee oversees the Department of Law and activities in regards to the Department of Law, in addition to activities in the courts, and we look at any bills referred to our committee that have anything to do with the Department of Law, criminal penalties, civil penalties, penalties etc., it is my duty as Judiciary Chair to ask the tough questions of the executive branch. In regards to the Judiciary Committee, I have been hearing bills in regards to court reform. In addition, I have been asked, I've asked the Department of Law to come before the committee and answer tough questions of why they continue to ex extend the disaster declarations, which many of us believe are unfounded. For example, a disaster declaration was declared that said that all the hospitals were virtually at or near capacity. We just simply ask, show us the data. Show us the data. Show us that, that the reason why over Thanksgiving you decided to keep us under disaster declaration based on this data. We've asked, how do you get cases off of the roll? We have asked, what about the constitutional violations and what about the arbitrary applications where some are essential, some are non-essential. We've also asked some tough questions to you in emails. And how did you identify the death certificates? Was there any funding for COVID for a COVID diagnosis? Bottom line is we're just asking questions that Alaskans want answered. And I would like to once again ask you to reconsider this letter what my colleagues are saying is this is an assault on the legislature. You not wanting to come for an important checks and balance before the legislature and have your important 
directors and commissioners come before the committee is unacceptable. It's a critical check and balance on government. So as people know in Alaska, I have gone and worked with constitutional freedom fighters, Alaskans for Constitutional Rights, Free Alaska, Save Anchorage, Save Midtown, and I've worked and fight it. I've been fighting tirelessly to help get Alaskans have the law not arbitrarily applied. As you know, the governor arbitrary, he, cho he chose winners and losers. He chose who was essential and who was not essential. The law is supposed to be equally applied, not arbitrarily applied. It is my responsibility as judiciary chair to ask these tough questions. So Alaskans, I want you to know that I'm not backing down. I'm gonna fight for you. I believe in the constitution. I believe in capitalism and I'm here to fight for the rights of Alaskans. So with that, please stay tuned. There's going to be another video where I get into the more technical response of the letter. And with that Alaskans, thank you for standing tall with me. We will not back down. We will continue to fight. Thank you very much. I'm Senator Laura Reinbold.